boat. The Tekla, if you can see, is just beyond this fishing boat. Now let's go and see her. Seems very subtropical up here. It's almost like the Caribbean, and even got the reggae music playing on the tech club. There, we're sneaking up. On the Mickey taking crew, because I've had to come the other side because the sunlight was Oh, the sun, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the sun wasn't right. <laughs> I you have an eye for these things. You really have an eye for these things. A what? A what? <laughs> for filming. What's just that? like. Just like for fishing. Fishing? What? Yeah. Fishing, you're really good at it. I'm not good at fishing. I'm good at fishing, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's in the evening, we've been kicked out the harbour again. It's a very busy harbour. Oh, well I've got a beer. Thank you very much, Inky. A lot warmer now though. <laughs> yeah. Well that's what's giving us this breeze, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fair breeze. How about these before you get Three and a half thousand meters. Three and a half thousand meters. And then uh, 180 in, uh, in barrels. Yeah, in the barrels. The, um, so we end up going in, going out, chasing around, chasing our tails. So I left them, filling up the fuel. And I went to see the glacier that empties into Disco Bay. And it is some impressive glacier. Glacier water, I suppose, comes into the ocean, um, and it's very rich in um, fish, baked fish, cod, and, that, and halibut. And they come back and they fish in the morning. They go out in the morning, and after a wee while, they come back into Jacob's Haven or Iliasat and um, do it all again. And they, it's fishing. And not only that. It wouldn't surprise me if some whales popped up next door. They are all about us, just chasing this fish all over the place, feeding. So it is an astonishing area. I can't believe the weather. Well, I do hear the Arctic's on fire, and I can understand why, because it's been really, really warm, apparently. And the Inuit say it's been getting warmer every year, so... That doesn't bode well. And actually, in fact, the scientific ship next door, which I'll show you in a second, the Senna, they've been doing glacial surveys, sediment surveys, um, and see what sediments are deposited, I guess, in the delta of the glacier. And, I, and that's been dramatically increasing nutrient inputs. Well, this is where this Northwest Passage will start with the tech lab. And uh, I've been a few days in the Ilias Sand, I'm always old David, Jacob's Haven, which used to belong to the Dutch until they got kicked out by the Danes. And they ended up in Rose Bay. Um, but it, it's quite a small port, and we've spent the last few days going in and out with a tech lab because there's not enough room. So, but yesterday was absolutely brilliant. We went out yesterday, put out, we were out to anchor. And the whales, just uh, the humpback whales, just turned up around the boat, and it was quite amazing. And they just they just spend their time going around the shore um, after small bait fish. 
which leads me on to all the fishing because I was over the glacier yesterday as well uh, filming and all of these these little fishermen I mean, they're all darting in and out unloading um, they've been catching they, they, they net the bait fish I think and then once they've got the bait fish they again go and line and hook the halibut so um, and that's all the way around just around the front edge of the um, ice which comes with a bit of danger really because if those well it's what it, the glass is much further up but that's just a combination of icebergs that are all stuck together and if one rolls you get a tsunami or away but anyway that's their, their that's their living and they seem to do all right that's it um, they don't sort of offload very much fish but it must be worthwhile so I guess green halibut must be very expensive um, but it's incredibly interesting what's the um, what's, is that the boiler? Yeah. well that's the boiler this is the heater oh the central heating yeah I thought it was a bit chilly that night last night? no nah, it wasn't chilly you, are you starting with that as well? Huh? You, you better not be starting with that as well. So. Who was that? Lovingly caressing the map. Yes, but of course I was uh, rudely interrupted by uh, this young man. Which who one? had more pressing matters. Who? The important stuff. Oh, important stuff? Yeah. Uh, where, what? Where to hide it? Yeah, So, but don't put it on the camera. And the idea was that you wouldn't find it. <laughs> I'm finishing to clean up the floor for the next cruise we arrive. Yeah. Right, and they're doing the Northwest Passage. Exactly. Yeah. So the ship's shaped and shiny. Exactly. And are you got to do the deck? Yeah, I'll lay down. You got, what are you got to do the deck? Yeah, always. Always? Yeah. Deck. Okay. And then there's food to get? Food to get? We did the water and the diesel yesterday. Yeah, I remember we did that yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, for the food. Hmm. For you guys to eat through the ice. And then... Good. Now, the serious part. There, the boat is a, the ship or boat, whatever you want to call it, is a little bit different. It works a little bit different than at home. And I'm going to point out a few examples which will be crucial uh, during our trip. What we need to live on is water, of course. We have a limited supply of this. We do have a water maker, but the showering um, will have to be brought down to an absolute minimum well a minimum that we can all bear <laughs> or your cabin mates can bear then electricity is also nowadays vital because we charge our phones and all our other equipment to get online with so electricity is also very sparse on this boat on this ship the lights are all burning that's one set of uh, batteries 24 volt uh, then there are the plugs is 220 or 230 as we call it the generator which is running at the moment yeah, so we don't like the noise of the generator, we don't want to burn uh, too much uh, diesel anyway. So please, if you leave your cabin, flip off the switches. Uh, if you leave this place, the, uh, the community area, flip off the switches. Uh, coffee machine over there, they run, they're, they're heavy consumers, just like a hairdryer. Now, we need to run the generator for that. We will not run the generator for a hairdryer. So, are there people still smoking? Yeah. Except for some. I don't even use it anymore <laughs> in the normal... Uh, yeah. normal yeah. Yeah. No, open fire inside is absolutely prohibited. So also smoking. Um, so we're over here at the moment, Greenland. And, <laughs> and we have a, a, a beautiful voyage ahead of us. Um, which first will lead us to Pond Inlet, uh, uh, Canada itself. <coughs> It's about, uh, well, depending on the ice situation, which is very minimal at the moment, but it'll be around 550, 600 miles. So we need to clear out of this country. We need to get stamps. We need to get the police to give us the okay that we can leave. And we need, then need to send this information to Canada. Another very big, big place. There, uh, at this time of year, gets easier and easier. But it took a long time for the ice which was over here on the coast to move out. We have just had a look and uh, well, it looks pretty pretty clear, it looks very clear. Then further into Lanchester Sound, it also doesn't look so bad. 
I am personally of the opinion that the more wind we have over there at the moment, from different directions, and yet made a good point, maybe not from the north, but the more big winds that sweep through there, the more it hushes and meshes up the, the ice bits, and then hopefully they get small enough and spread out enough for us to find uh, uh, a proper and safe route further down into this uh, great jungle. I've never done this before. I've sealed in ice many, many times, uh, but I've never undertaken any such a journey as we are, uh, are about to do. So we fitted out uh, with um, a little iridium thing where you've got uh, a telex, we've got an Imasart, we've got uh, so we've got <coughs> email contact. Of course, the VHF. Uh, we probably not won't be. We probably won't be alone um, in this quest. There's a there's a couple of yards behind us, um, and of course we're being watched. This we need also a lot more time for the ice to to break up, so we have time, and hopefully we can make it sailing across the. Uh, out of the question. This well, year is different, much different than last year, I think. Eh? The ice conditions. Yeah, it looks a lot different. Yeah. But uh, I don't. There's still a lot of old ice in the in the Peel Sound, so. Yeah. yeah. This is no, no guarantees. No guarantees. Are you able to? Um, we, I have the ice navigator uh, course. Um, nice week on the Teschelling in the winter. Do you, do you have a plan of how you want to? I've, I'm not a, a huge fan of the Belloid Strait. So if you <laughs> if you bear with me, if you don't go through Peel Sound, I, I don't like the Belloid Strait. Because it's uh, it's a little bit out of control sometimes with the currents. Currents. Yeah. Okay. And if you have to turn around, and that's what happened with his yacht, he he tried to they tried to go through, and it was very nice with the, with the, with the current with them, um, but he had to turn around, and then the current is against you, and then all of a sudden the ice flows come come at you really quick. Oh yeah. And then it, yeah, if you if, and if it piles up, it is uh, okay. yeah. <coughs> I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it, but if we have to, then we have to. Quite close to shore and a lot of people seem to be kayaking, which seems to be quite a pleasant way to go and visit the um, ocean or sea. Um, I, don't, I think I might have a go at that. horrifying uh, situation is uh, if, if somebody falls overboard. It can happen to anybody at any moment. If, God forbid, somebody goes over the side, so falls into the water, and you see this happen, you are the last hope for this person. You look at it, you don't lose him out of your sight, and you point at him, and you scream your lungs out. <coughs> Make sure that the person in the back who's in charge notices it, notices it, uh, Everybody needs to come up, so the alarm will be run. We will plot the position, and we will not lose sight of this person. Yeah? If you see this happen, throw over a live ring. We have two in the front with a rope. Do not attach the rope to the ship. Attach to the live ring. The smoke pot will come along with it. It will be banging around, doesn't matter. It needs to go into the water as close to the person as possible. Now the smoke is, of course, it will stay smoking for a long time, so it's visible from very high, and also for us and the ship. So it's a mark where, where this person is. It will also slow the boat. Do not fall overboard. Please. So we don't throw these guys, huh? Don't throw an eeper. It's of no use. And if you steal the eeper because you like it, and you take it home, it will send the tech last name. I will find you. <laughs> Fire, of course, is dangerous anywhere at home. Uh, it's very dangerous. On a ship, it's a, we see this as a confined space, it's even more dangerous. So there's a few things we've uh, taken into account. We have the fire extinguishers inside uh, the boat, in every water type compartment, at least one. They're all foam. Uh, a powder, sorry, except for the one in the back, 
uh, which is for CO2 for the electrical equipment. We spit it out with uh, smoke detectors. They detect smoke very quickly, also moist. Um, so it can happen that uh, this piece of equipment will send off an alarm. It's a continuous re-ringing. When, when that happens, we all gather here in the middle deck where some is. So we can take out the crew list, sound, <coughs> do a body check, see uh, if everybody's there, and then take the appropriate uh, action. Uh, this uh, electrical ringing bell, we will also use this in case of the other two emergencies. So, man overboard or abandoning ship. Now, first, abandoning ship. The bell goes off. For some reason, we, uh, uh, we have to leave the ship. Uh, now, if you're honest, we're getting into a place where it becomes more and more light. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, we have invested in uh, a, a suit, specially made for the Arctic. If we do need to leave the ship, well, the ship is always the safest place until the last. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a one size fits all. Yeah. One size fits all. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have to go into the water, we have two life rafts, one over here and one over there. 